Today I'll be showing you how to make your own custom Godot plugin. Now what I'm looking to add is a plugin that gives us another tab down here on the bottom and it's going to have a button inside of it that basically randomizes the color of every node that I've currently selected. Now we're going to be coding a plugin for Godot but if you want one of the coolest plugins for your brain then you should check out Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform focused on making subjects like math, science, and programming easy to learn in a clear and engaging way. They have a massive library of courses. So you can just hop right in and get started learning. I've been going through some of their math courses lately just to like freshen up because I forgot so much from high school, honestly, and it's been a huge help. Now, instead of just listening to a lecture or something, Brilliant offers a more hands-on and engaging method for learning. So you're actually going to visualize and experiment with like concepts, which is proven to be six times more effective at actually teaching you than like a lecture would. Even fitting in like 10 to 15 minutes a day of learning is one of the best habits that you can build in my personal opinion. And they make it especially easy because they just have a mobile app. So you can literally just open that up and get some learning in no matter where you are, which I think is super convenient and helpful. Now, if you want to get started using Brilliant, you can try Brilliant completely for free for 30 days. If you head over to my link at brilliant.org forward slash Cubal. You can also scan the QR code right here, or if it's easier for you, just head down to the description. There's gonna be a link down there as well. And in addition to that, if you sign up for an annual subscription with my link, you're going to get 20% off. But thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Now back to our Godot project. The first thing you wanna do is go to your project settings. And if you switch over to your plugins tab, from here, you just wanna click on the create new plugin button and then fill out all this stuff. So I'm gonna call it my plugin and then it's gonna automatically give us a folder name. The author is gonna be myself and that should be it. But if you click on create, you're gonna see that this added the plugin and it enabled it by default. And what it's also done is inside of our add-ons folder, it's made a folder for our plugin specifically and then also a script that's going to run when we actually activate this plugin. Okay, so inside of the script that it generated for us, we have the tool annotation at the top, which is essential. Otherwise, your script is not going to run in the editor. And then we also have the enter and exit tree functions. And this is essentially when the plugin is enabled or disabled, it's going to call these. Now, what I want to do is add a button to the bottom panel. And to do that, we actually need a scene set up. So we're going to put a button in a scene. I'm just going to inherit this scene from control. We're going to call this my plugin scene and then add a button to it. And the text of this button is just going to be randomize color. Now I'm going to remember to save this inside of my plugins uh, subfolder in add-ons. And when I go back into my script, I'm essentially going to load that scene in and add it to the bottom panel. And because we need to free the scene later on, I'm just going to make a reference to it script wide. So we're going to say var my plugin. And now we're going to assign this in the enter tree function. So I'm going to set my plugin equal to, and we're going to use the preload, give it the path to my my plugin scene, copy paste the path, and then we're going to remember to instantiate that scene. And now with the instantiated scene, we're going to call the add control to bottom panel method. This allows us to pass in that my plugin reference and then also give us a name for the, the actual tab that we want to appear down here. So I'm just gonna call it my plugin like so. And there's a couple different functions we can use in place of this one. This will obviously add the control to the bottom panel, but you can add it to any of these docs on the side or even some of the toolbars. For now though, let's just remember to actually remove the plugin once it's disabled, which is also something you wanna remember is like Godot isn't gonna clean up your plugin when you disable it. So you wanna make sure that you free all the nodes that you created and also detach any signal connections you made. In this case, we just wanna call the remove control from bottom panel. And all we need for this one is just the reference to the control that we want to remove. And we should also remember to just uh, free this node like so. Now, because we made changes to the plugin while it was running, we have to basically uh, disable it and then re-enable it. And you can see that once we did that, it popped up this little tab at the bottom, which we can switch over to and you see that randomize color button, which is basically what we added in the scene for the plugin. So let's add code to the plugin scene by just attaching a script to the my plugin scene. We're gonna make sure it gets saved in that same folder next to everything else. This one can inherit from control, which is fine. Perfect. And inside 
inside of this one, it's also going to be a tool script. So just remember to add at tool at the top. And from here, let's make the button connection to this script. So I'm going to go to my button, go to the signals and just connect the pressed to my script. So we get a function for this one. Now from here, all we need to do is randomize the color of all the selected nodes. And we can do that with the following code here. So I'm just going to loop through every node in editor interface dot get selection dot get selected nodes. And then on that node, I can just assign a random color to the modulation. So if I save this again and go back, disable, re-enable, and then go to my scene, if I select all of my sprites here and then switch over to my plugin tab, randomize the color, you can see that everything works. Now there is a really annoying problem with it. And that is the fact that if I control Z, it's basically going to undo each action individually. And what I want is control Z to undo all three of the nodes at the same time. So to add that functionality, I'm back in my plugin scene script. And I just want a new variable, we're going to call this one undo underscore redo. And I'm going to set the type to the editor undo redo manager. And then this is going to be assigned from the parent node, which is our plugin script. So whenever we instantiate that new plugin, I'm just going to say my plugin dot undo redo is equal to and we can use the get undo redo function from here back in the plugin scene script before I actually make the changes to the nodes, I'm going to say undo underscore redo dot create action. And this allows us to have like a visible action name in the editor. So I'm just going to call this my plugin randomize color. And since I'm bundling the randomization of every node into one action, I don't need to assign the modulation directly anymore. What I can do instead is call these two methods down here. So the first one is going to add a do property, which basically says on this node, we want to set the modulation to the random color value, which I've defined here. And then we want to add an undo property, which says whenever we hit control Z, it's going to reassign the modulate value on this node to the modulation that it was before. And then finally, after we loop through everything, I just want to call undo underscore redo dot commit action and that's going to actually apply it to our editor. So again, we go back to project settings, disable, enable. And now if we go to the 2D view, and first I'm gonna reset the modulation of these guys. And then if I go to my history tab up here, we have a history of all the actions that we've committed. So let's try selecting all these and seeing if our plugin works. So it gave us that text that we specified the my plugin randomized color, it applied all of the randomization to all three nodes. And now if I hit control Z, it's going to undo everything at the same time. So you can kind of see how useful plugins will be in your development. If you have a process that is very tedious to do manually while you're developing your game, it's probably more efficient to make a plugin for it. Now plugins are literally only there to save you time. So it's good to think about like, how much time it takes you to actually implement the plugin versus how much time it's going to save and whether or not you should do so. And it's also good to think about like, if there's a specific plugin like dialogue management, for example, that you want to create, you might as well just use something that already exists like Dialogic, which I know literally everybody and their grandma uses. So always a good idea to search the internet for an existing plugin before you create your own and reinvent the wheel essentially. But either way, plugins are super powerful and just a great skill to have in your toolbox. So I hope this video helped you learn something new. Before you go, I wanna say a huge thanks to all of the current channel members. You guys are awesome and your support is really appreciated. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.